This is a chemical burger. <laughs> if you're a Sanders supporter, you've probably heard the safe bet theory a hundred times by now. It goes something like this. I think Bernie is great and all, but he calls himself a socialist, and I'm not sure people will vote for him. Hillary Clinton seems like a typical politician, but I'll take that over Donald Trump any day. So as much as I'd like to support Sanders, I want someone who I know will win. Well, you know, you may like Bernie Sanders or not, but he's not electable. You gotta vote for Hillary Clinton if you want to prevent a Republican from getting the White House. Progressives have been hearing this for a long time. It's why no one ran a primary campaign against Obama. It's why John Kerry was chosen to run against George Bush. It's why Bill Clinton was chosen to run against his dad. But according to a recent Quinnipiac poll, Bernie Sanders would absolutely devastate Trump in a general election. 51 to 38. That's 13 points. Oh my God! To put that in context, the popular vote in presidential elections is usually won or lost by less than 5%. Bush beat Kerry by less than 3% and lost to Gore in the popular vote by less than 1%. Obama beat Romney by 4% and even his landslide victory against John McCain was actually only about 7%. 7%, by the way, is also the amount by which Hillary would beat the Donald, according to that same Quinnipiac poll. Even the Huffington Post's less Bernie favorable general election prediction charts have had both Hillary and Bernie beating Trump by wide margins for months, and Bernie by slightly more. So then why do we still hear the claim that she's more electable? Hillary Clinton beats Trump 47 to 40, Bernie Sanders beats Trump 51 to 38. Well, the absurd belief in her electability over Sanders probably comes from two widely held, yet totally dubious assumptions about independent voters. One, that independent voters are moderates who approve of moderate candidates. And two, that elections are won or lost based on winning over independent voters. Now I'm perfectly willing to accept that some independent voters are moderates. And that independent voters are a factor when it comes to winning general elections. But there's something much, much more important. So instead of getting bogged down discussing the idiotic mythology surrounding the independent voter, if it's all the same to you, can we focus on what matters? Against the leading Republicans, more often than not, we do better than Hillary Clinton does. So if you want to make sure we don't have some right-wing extremist in the White House, you're looking at the candidate who could do that. Voter turnout is possibly the most misunderstood and underappreciated factor when it comes to election results. I've often heard that when voter turnout is high, the more liberal candidate wins, whereas when it's low, the conservative wins. So let's see if that's true. Here's a graph of voter turnout in US presidential elections. The Y axis represents the percentage of eligible voters who actually voted. Now this graph goes all the way back to 1824 when most Americans weren't actually allowed to vote, so let's focus in on recent history. Now let's plot on who won all of these elections. We'll represent Democrats in blue and Republicans in red. I'll be honest with you, high voter turnout might have some advantage for Democrats, but this doesn't look like a totally definitive factor to me. The reality is probably that the relationship between voter turnout and election results is complicated. But there's something more important that we can learn from this graph. In 1996, the voter turnout was only 49%, whereas when Obama won his historic victory in 2008, the turnout was 57.1%. That's a difference of more than 8%. Now remember when I said elections are usually won or lost by less than 5%? Oh, I meant that. Well, in modern elections, because only about half of eligible voters vote, that 5% only represents about 2.5% of eligible voters. Another way to say that is a 1% increase in voter turnout represents 2% of actual voters. So that 8% variance in voter turnout represents 16% of the election result. When candidates win or lose by less than 5%, 16% is more than a little important. The ability for a candidate to mobilize his or her base and get supporters to the polls can very easily win or lose an election. So between Hillary and Bernie, who do you think would do a better job of mobilizing their supporters? Well, if it's any indication, Bernie Sanders has broken records in online donations. He's received more than 2 million individual donations from at least 800,000 people. 
Hillary Clinton, on the other hand, has not released these numbers, although we do know that she's gotten about 18,000 maxed out donations. However many people actually donated to Clinton, she'd probably release the number if it wasn't embarrassingly small. I'd say it's a safe bet that she has many times fewer individual contributors than Bernie. Now a Clintonite might say, well that's fine, but these 800,000 people who put their money where their mouths are won't necessarily get out and vote. And fair enough, Clintonian straw man. Maybe all these donors won't show up to vote because they only exist as magical internet ghosts who are unable to take corporeal form. So then let's look at who had more people show up to their rallies. Well, here Bernie, of course, also breaks records once again. All told, he's had more than 100,000 people show up to his rallies. In one particularly embarrassing moment for the Clinton campaign, she had 600 people show up to hear her speak at the University of New Hampshire. Two days later, Sanders drew 3,000 people at the exact same location. I could go on, but I think this graph speaks for itself. Here's Bernie, and here's Hillary. Now, I could continue down this road and compare their online polling stats or their social media numbers, but I think I've made my point. Bernie mobilizes his base far more effectively than Clinton. I feel it's safe to assume this will translate into votes, but if you can show me any evidence that Clinton might have a better chance of getting more supporters out to vote, I'd like to see it. So please, tell me what you think in the comments below. But assuming no one can meet that challenge, I think it's safe to say Bernie will do a better job of getting voters excited enough to actually go to the polls. Considering how massive of a factor voter turnout is when it comes to presidential elections, it seems absolutely absurd to think that Clinton is more electable. And yet, electability is only a small part of politics. Of course it feels good when your team wins regardless, but at the end of the day, the issues are what really matter. Policy is what matters. I'd be a Bernie supporter even if he was isn't more electable, because I'd rather lose on the side that wants to fight for worker rights, get rid of the corrupt campaign finance system, and break up the big banks. So now that I've addressed the electability issue, can we focus on what matters? You've ever been burned, and you will have a scar.